Joel Klatt, we have a massive, massive college football weekend, and let's give some love to the hardy folk in the Big Ten because Penn oh, State yes. and Iowa, I've watched them both play, are both. This is the first Iowa team? No, you. Oh, I'm sorry. You're not allowed to compliment Iowa ever, actually. So This is a real team. I'm sorry? They're a real football team. Not the fake ID of college football. They still carry it on them to clubs. No, that's not, that's they're, not true. They're twenty, like my daughter. They're twenty-one, and they've got the real one too. I I I love what Iowa is doing, and and I love what Penn State is doing. And this conference, by the way, and it's it's not even just the conference because it's really just Iowa from the Western Division. Yeah. The East, though, the East has basically four top ten teams at this point. They've got Ohio State, who still can you can be considered in in that realm. They've got Penn State, Michigan, and Michigan State now, who's been playing. Uh, terrific football. So that side of the division is incredible. And if, by the way, if you're a Buckeye fan, how do you overcome an early loss at a conference with all of these teams that you That's could right. beat and then get yourself right back into playoff uh, position? Now, now I'm, I'm not a member of the American media. I am closer to the mafia than the media. Let's be honest. About Interesting. That. I'm not, by the way, um, you know who didn't have uh, a, a lot of structure early in his NFL career, but who? seems to be succeeding just fine. Who Baker Mayfield. Just overcame everything you were talking about. These guys, they need structure. They don't, they don't uh, need coaching changes. Really? This guy had coaching changes, and he succeeded. And he went to a putrid organization that had no success, and now he's clearly doing well. Just wanted to throw that in there, but please continue. Okay, so let me say this, <laughs> and this is a great game. <laughs> Iowa-Penn State's a great game. I went to dinner with a buddy last night whose son, every year, his dad will take him to a college football game every year in the country. He lives in L.A. That's awesome. And he chose this one. And his dad... That's- and his dad said, you know how hard it is to get to Iowa? <laughs> can't, you, it's true. can't you pick like Columbus? But my point is, with James Franklin, now I'm not going to start something here, and I don't like when the media does this, <laughs> but with my labyrinth of amazing sourcing, I'm going to throw this out there. Let's hear it. This is very important for Penn State, because if James Franklin's going to continue to be the number one target for USC, and I believe it is, okay. he can't lay an egg in these games. I think... I'm just saying this. So what's a Penn State? Span, Penn State fans staff to root, root is for? Penn State staff is focused. I am calling for an upset. Penn State going into Iowa and winning. Well, I, listen, I won't be surprised if either of these teams win. Um, both are riding long, long winning streaks dating back to last season. In fact, Penn State's last loss was to this Iowa team a year ago uh, before Sean Clifford started playing better and not turned the football over. Both teams have found the efficiency on the offensive side in order to allow their defenses to shine. So you've got the second best scoring defense in the country in Iowa, the third best scoring defense in, in Penn State, and they do it very different ways. And, and I love kind of the juxtaposition between the two because Penn State's winning on defense with athleticism, multiple looks, confusion. They've got guys in the back end that I just love. Joey Porter Jr. at the corner, I really like him. Uh, Jaquan Brisker, their safety, excellent player, long, athletic. They blitz a lot of guys, give a lot of looks, and then Iowa just sits there. In the same defense, <laughs> like lurking in the corn, yeah. in the exact same defense almost every single snap, and they act like a boa constrictor. They just kind of suffocate you. They're like, fine, yeah, that was nice. Good four yard gain. Okay, now you got four yards. Okay, now you got a first down. And, and then all of a sudden, and then all of a sudden, you look up and you're like, wait, wait, wait. We just threw another interception because it was a tip pass, and all the eyes are in the backfield. I can't wait for this, this game. And it's the biggest game in a great environment since the mid 80s. Oh, Kinnick Stadium's great. It's amazing. Amazing. The Children's Hospital. Yes, it, it is weird. I, did I ever tell you my story? I don't want to waste your time, America, but it, <laughs> yeah, I, I'm fairly fascinating. So the point is, I was driving in a bus. I was going to say, does it involve you with a famous person at dinner? Because that's basically every story you tell. <laughs> so I was right? in a bus right. in Iowa. Okay. Ten, you're, I was at the other place. I think they went broke. And I was in a bus. <laughs> I was on a show called Sports Nation. And I was on a bus with the crew. And we drove through Iowa. We stayed the night there. Okay. They have a great pizza place that had aviation theme. It was anyway. And we drove through and Iowa had the most amazing sunset I'd ever seen. There's no mountains out there to block it. And I, and I literally sat there and I was sitting there with the, the crew and I was like, Oh, I get it. I get Iowa. Like I, this in the summer, those, those long summers, it was stunning. And I'm going to tell you something. We always talk about great American venues. Mm. There may not be a better, and I'm dead serious on this. Kinnick stadium is about Listen, I've had my issues with Iowa. 
<laughs> that is going to be on television. <laughs> that is going to be an it un- will. It oh, will. it's going to be an unbelievable environment. Uh, by the way, the sun will go down because it's actually in the day, folks. Just I know Gus and I are always at noon Eastern. This game's actually at four Eastern, so we will see the sunset oh. uh, during the game. It'll end at night. Like this is kind of and and I totally agree with you. This stadium. There are a few venues in college football that are are romantic. This is one of them. Absolutely. Um, obviously, the Rose Bowl is is yeah. what it is, in particular for that game. But this is one of those venues, and and this this modern tradition with the Children's Hospital. Yeah. It's it's going to be an amazing environment. I can't wait for it, and and it should be a great game. Okay, let's uh, let's segue to a couple things here. First of all, uh, Edo, great guy, great recruiter, great story. Basically, Ole Miss didn't work. Take out Joe Burrow, not really working. I got nothing against him. He's a nice man. He's a great recruiter. I've always thought he's a coordinator who, because of his story, his history in Louisiana, they elevate him. There's nothing wrong with that. He won a title. He deserves every bit of it. But in that conference, I don't think Edo is a head coach. I'm sorry. And and the rumor is this morning he's going to get whacked. I just think it's the right move. It's hard to defend his record. And you can say, what do you mean? He won a national championship. He, he struck lightning in a bottle yes. with a transfer quarterback that had a magical season with a young coordinator that was doing things that was very unique in the conference offensively. They had great weapons around him. That was a lightning in a bottle year. That was one of the great teams in college football history that just kind of manifested. Now, he has a, a, a lot to do with that, but then he lost those two coordinators, Joe Brady and Dave Aranda. Remember, Dave Aranda took the job at, at Baylor now, and he's doing a nice job at Baylor. So he had to retool his staff, and he hires guys that he had to fire the next year, including Bo Pelini, who just was a, a disaster defensively. If you take, and I know this is not fair to do, but if you look at his record at LSU, and you take the 15-0 and out, it's basically like, 33 and, 23 and, or so. and yeah, 19 yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's not great. No, and it's and remember, the standard at LSU is very high. It's a top three recruiting program in the country. USC, Alabama, and, LSU, And they Ohio measure State. themselves with Alabama. You yeah. know, how are we competing with Alabama? Well, they're not. By the way, you, you say it's not fair. It's, it, it's totally fair. I always said this. If you, because I always have the take out the best and worst scenario. So if you take Matt Ryan, right, throw out the bottom and top. Right, like right. A, a real estate. You're in real estate for 20 years. Take out your best year. You sold a mansion. Take out your worst year. Your first year, you were lost. Then the remaining 18 years, that's what you are. Okay. And the same thing with Matt Ryan. Take out his MVP year with Kyle Shanahan. Take out his rookie year. What is he? It's a B plus quarterback. He's not an A. So if you take out the Joe Burrow remarkable year, He's a, he's won fifty six percent of his games at USC LSU. It's not good enough. It's okay. And and by the way, you can also th- like throw out the three Ole Miss years and then throw out the Joe Burrow year, and you see what he is. And he's he's basically kind of a six hundred coach. Yeah. Well, I'm sorry, a six hundred winning That's percentage not does not work at LSU. Not with the standard that they've oh. set within the sport. All right. Um, you and I have been steadfast in our pro Jim Harbaugh. Support. True. We it's have true. taken a lot of arrows here, but I put up that Captain America shield. I protect <laughs> Clat. <laughs> Is that Harbaugh's quirky? He's a little different. And the fair criticism is how come he can't get the quarterback position? Right? Yeah, that's an interesting one. But I watch him now. They've got an identity. They do. Little- I, you know what's interesting, and we saw him last weekend. You know, so I, so I finally got to to sink my teeth into this version of Michigan as opposed to what I had been covering over the last couple of years, and it's remarkably different. And I think that that should be communicated because he did something that's very difficult to do. It didn't work uh, for uh, Mac Brown at Texas when he tried to go young on the staff that's and changed right. everything up. Remember, uh, around 2012, he hired Manny Diaz, he hired Brian Harson as coordinators. Didn't work out. Bob Stoops tried this. It did work out when he brought Lincoln, Lincoln Riley in and he changed philosophy and changed identity. What Jim Arbaugh has done is he has gotten much more youthful on his staff. So all 10 assistant coaches are under 45 years wow. old. His defensive coordinator is a 34-year-old from the Ravens, Mike McDonald, who's doing things defensively that is gonna that, that they're gonna help them in the back end of this season, and they have an identity on the offensive side. I credit them a great deal what they did against Wisconsin. It's very easy to just throw your run game out and say we can't run it against right. Wisconsin, and they were never gonna run it great against Wisconsin. But you know what they did? They ran it enough 
to where the play action pass was effective and they put the second and third level defenders in conflict and they were able to win because of it. So, you know, listen, I don't know if it's the year for Michigan. All I know is that the, t- the changes that they've made have really benefited that program. The program as they currently sit is far better off than they were a year ago or maybe even two years ago. Yeah. Big Ten's having a very good year. They are. No Iowa's doubt. real. Penn State's real. Michigan's back. Ohio State's always viable. And you know, how you and I both like Mel Tucker. That's right. He's won a lot of games as a dog. Let me throw this out. Uh, Steve Sarkeesian faces Oklahoma this weekend. Yes. As you pointed out correctly, I got to give Clatt the occasional tip of the cap. Appreciate it. Okay. Sometimes he hits the corners and he deserves it. Okay. <laughs> you got to call, you know, umpire comes out. That's a strike. It's very friendly. Oklahoma's offensive line, bit of a mess. Yep. Uh, Texas is athletic, but these are mostly not Sark's guys. Do they have a chance in this space? They do, they do have a chance this week because the, the offense is vastly different since they made the cho- change at quarterback. They went from Hudson Card to Casey Thompson, yes. and now they're averaging somewhere over 50 points per game with Casey Thompson in at quarterback. They've also made a more of a commitment to Bijan Robinson, the running back. I think Bijan Robinson, their running oh back, is, is probably the best player overall in college football. He's insane. Whether he wins a Heisman Trophy or not, is not. remember, that, that award is something Look at different him. than the best player. You can just he is a great talent. If he touches the ball 30 times against Oklahoma, Oklahoma is going to have a really hard time beating them. Now, the worst unit on the field is going to be Texas's defense this weekend. But that's not; those aren't Sark's guys. He inherited a weird defense, and, and I don't think it should be an indictment on him. That's just what he's got to work around is that defense. And I think offensively they'll be able to keep up. This should be a great game, regardless of what's going on with these two programs. They generally play a one possession game. It's not going to shock me at all if Texas wins this game because Oklahoma just has not gotten out of the fog of what they've kind of been so far early in this season. Now, they've got great potential, but it won't surprise me at all if Texas were to win this game. I'm looking over my notes here. We hit on Ed O. The Big Ten's great. I'm calling the Penn State upset. Michigan. All right. Watch out for Syracuse at home against Wake. What do you almost mean? upset of the week. Uh- uh, you know, I had, there's no value in almost anything. Sure, sure there is. I don't see that's why they, they're a road. No, they're a see. home dog. Time out at a weird that, place. That's like going to a restaurant and saying, you know what? It was almost a great meal. <laughs> there's no value in almost. It's Either so fascinating. Call the upset. Are, are you calling the upset? It's an almost upset. They're a home dog. That like, means they cover. Do I have to spell it out for you? <laughs> do we have to do like? Do we have to actually do this? By the way, okay. that means they cover. Syracuse covers against Wake. Maybe an outright win. Okay. Before you go, by the know, way, everybody I've ever talked to that have gone to dinner with you, almost a good meal. See that kind of cheap shot ruins what was a really friendly fifteen minutes. You know, I I want to agree with you, but it was just there for the taking. You know who so texted me last week? Fred Couples. He said he's done with you and he'd like to meet me. <laughs> okay, so hey, Clat, more yes. breaking news. Br- bring it. I would love to hear it. Breaking news. I swear to God, folks, America's executives, wait for this. Show this to is start. it. Come on, what do we got? Joy. I'm going to give it to Joy. Joy. I, I okay, I do. The well, Patriots, you don't have to, but I thought we thought it would Patriots be nice. The Patriots are trading Stephon Gilmore. Oh wow! To the Carolina Panthers for a six-round pick. Now that's interesting because the Panthers just acquired another corner last week, C.J. Henderson from Jacksonville. Right. So what that tells you is J.C. Horn, who you loved, it's yep. a great corner, the rookie. He's hurt. He's yes. out for the year. Yes. And it also tells you they think in that building. They think it's the playoff team. That's right. They're giving up draft picks. So Carolina's looking around and Make going. Make moves to win now. They believe in Sam Darnold. They believe in what boom, they have. Boom. All right. Give you a little bit more love after that. Because that you're right on that. What they're saying is, we're going to win with Darnold. We can win this division. That's what this move is saying. Every time Sam Darnold plays well and that organization wins a football game, it's a further indictment of the New York Jets. Yep. Fred Couples didn't really text me. <laughs> that's, that's true. I just lost He's my... Probably- he probably has texted me, though. Loves their segments. Freddie? Sh- should. Good seeing you, Clap. Talk to you soon. Hi, everybody. Thanks for watching. Subscribe here to get the latest from the show. Also, be sure to check out more of the best clips from The Herd or go watch a few segments from other shows on FS1.